Joining me for, is former longtime CNN Moscow bureau chief, Jill Doherty. Um, Jill, so can you just put it in perspective for our, our viewers, the scale of the shock that this created for the Russian people and for the government, and it didn't happen in a vacuum here? Yes, I, that's really true. Uh, you know, I think it is traumatizing for Russians, because you look back ever since Vladimir Putin was the president, which began, you know, 24 years ago, there have been a lot of terror attacks. And after each one, there was an investigation, not clear what happened. And just looking at this, literally days after Putin was reelected, you know, for a fifth term, I, I think they feel very, very insecure. And then the government on the other side, and we can talk about that, is trying to explain, you know, why this happened. And as Matthew pointed out, uh, apparently Putin was warned by uh, the United States about their picking up intel that there could be some type of attack, in fact, in a theater possibly. And he just dismissed it as blackmail and attempt to destabilize the country. So I think there are a lot of answers that Russians would like to have. That said, I think the government will try to divert them into paths of thinking that the government wants them to have. And look, yeah, yeah, to your point, uh, the United States has it warned Moscow of an impending attack. Russia's ambassador to the U.S. and Washington is now denying receiving that warning. But it was a, a bulletin that was out there uh, uh, publicly, as has been described by our reporting. Uh, I'm curious, uh, from your perspective, Russia has said they've thwarted attacks like these in the past. How do you anticipate Russia addressing the, the basic security failures that clearly happened here? Well, I don't think they are going to address them, quite honestly. I mean, uh, I covered so many attacks going way back to the end of Yeltsin and the beginning of Putin, then all through Putin. And there's always an investigation. There's always a big uh, excitement about, you know, we will get to the bottom of this. And they never do. I have to be honest. They never do. They never quite come to the point of explaining exactly how these things happen. So I would presume that they will have another investigation and it will yield probably some, uh, you know, examination, uh, some conclusion. But I don't think they will explain, even if they may know, what the real purpose is. And Omar, one thing on the ambassador, that statement did come out, ambassador to the United States, but he is saying, we here at the embassy in Washington, D.C., nothing yeah. was passed through us. He is not saying that the Russian government did not get this directly. And that's what the uh, the Biden administration is saying. We warned Russia or gave them that information directly. So they may not have talked to the embassy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very important distinction there. Now, look, uh, it does appear, because at, at the center of this, this is a tragedy. Over 100 people killed here. And then now comes the investigation and also the information stream that everyone is now trying to parse through what is real, what is propaganda, what is being used for political purposes. And it does appear Vladimir Putin is trying to, at least in some ways, use this attack for political purposes by implicating Ukraine and trying to unite Russians behind this Ukraine war, as he has been trying to do since this war began. What are the chances that that effort succeeds in the wake of this attack? Well, you know, they have at their disposal all of the media, all of the state media. Um, they already have a population that is traumatized by the war and has been already propagandized to believe that the West is out to get Russia. Uh, you know, it's the West, it's existential battle against the West. And so I think the uh, Kremlin will try to fold that into this narrative that, you know, that Russia is under attack. They also will probably try to make common cause with terrorism everywhere. You heard that in some of the comments that were given to uh, Matthew in those interviews. So uh, I think they will try, as I said, kind of derail any yeah. attempt by Russians to really uh, hold Putin to account for this, what is obviously a security failure. Yeah. Jill Jordy, uh, thank you for your perspective as always. Um, Kim, I also um, want to dig in a little bit to what we are seeing in terms of the fallout from the awful terror attack uh, in Moscow over the weekend. Um, there was an, a, a U.S. warning around intelligence related to uh, something like this happening. I want to show you what uh, Senator Tim Kaine uh, had to say, and then we'll talk about what Vladimir Putin is trying to claim is going on. Watch. 
the U.S. did warn Russia. And Vladimir Putin gave a speech on Tuesday discounting the warning, saying we were trying to meddle and create confusion. We also warned Iran a couple months ago about, about a potential attack by ISIS-K there. If you want to know the difference between democracies and authoritarians, we will tell nations if we're worried about their civilians. Russia or Iran would never tell us if they had news that there was going to be a terrorist attack in the United States. So, Kim, Putin is now trying to say that there is Ukrainian involvement or links mm. to what went on. What do we actually know and what is Putin going for with that? Well, look, uh, Putin needs a fall guy because his security services had been tracking an ISIS threat, had publicly announced disrupting various ISIS plots in Russia and the Caucasus. And, you know, a couple of years ago, ISIS Khorasan, the group in Afghanistan, had attacked Russians, uh, Russia's embassy there. So there was this longstanding threat from ISIS operatives. Putin needs to convince his people that he didn't leave them unprotected while he was pursuing a war of choice and aggression next door in Ukraine. That's why I think you're seeing reports that the U.S. and Britain have dismissed as not credible um, that these suspects, these four Tajik suspects, were captured on their way to Ukraine, on their way to a border area that's mined and full of patrols. And Definitely sure. the way I would choose to get out if Absolutely. I wanted to maintain my life. Briefly, uh, Stephen, the journal headline is, Attack in Russia deals a blow to Putin's strongman image. Is that what's going on? Yeah, this is humiliating for Putin. He's set himself up as the ultimate guarantor of Russian security. Uh, portraying himself as, as a bulwark against all these different forces uh, that he argues are trying to infringe on Russian sovereignty. Uh, and when, uh, you know, the, the, the history of this suggests that when Putin is humiliated, uh, that leads to more repression at home and more aggression abroad. And you've seen, even over the last few days, very uh, intense missile attacks on Ukraine, uh, which were taking place before this attack, but carried on through it. And that's a way of uh, you know, trying to uh, take attention away from what happened in Moscow.